Nation over in the KHL. And oh, what a hit. Look out. That's... Oh! Craig, over the middle. And oh. doubled, and then the ball. The thrill of the sport is putting the most important part of our body at risk. Concussions in contact sports are among the most prevalent injuries in sport. According to the American Association of Neurological Surgeons, women's hockey, football, and men's hockey have the greatest incident of concussions in sports. Our brains are encased in a hard protective shell and surrounded by cerebral spinal fluid, which is able to protect the brain from light trauma. Forces associated with rapid acceleration are often too great for this cushion and may result in a concussion. Forces from injury disrupt normal neuronal activity in the area, resulting in a cohort of symptoms. Symptoms may occur immediately. Others may be present from hours to days after the trauma. Symptoms may include temporary loss of consciousness, amnesia, dizziness, ringing in the ears, slurred speech, and appearing dazed. Delayed symptoms may include sensitivity to light and noise, difficulty concentrating, memory complaints, and irritability. As soon as a concussion or hit to the head is suspected, the athlete should be taken off and examined for symptoms. Elite or non-elite athletes should be accounted using the same protocol. Medical professionals may ask about symptoms using the Sport Concussion Assessment Tool or SCAT. It covers the areas such as cognition, physical balance, and memory recall. At a hospital, a CT scan can check for physical damage to the brain. However, concussion may not show noticeable brain damage so further testing may be done. The FDA has recently approved a blood test for detecting proteins released during brain injury. The blood test can predict the presence of a brain lesion with up to 97.5% accuracy. It can reduce the need for expensive CT scans that expose a patient to potentially harmful radiation. A holistic diagnosis assesses physical, cognitive, emotional aspects of health as well as sleep function. If the athlete has incurred brain damage, then depending on location and extent of damage, appropriate therapy should be pursued. For effective recovery, the athlete should get as much rest as possible and avoid activities that increase any of the symptoms. To get back into the game, certain protocols are followed. One of them is the graduated return to play protocol. Through this, athletes start with engaging in light exercise and over time, increase their level of activity. The competitive and aggressive nature of sport makes it fun to play and watch and should not be discouraged. However, sporting organizations should be encouraged to address violence and take precautions to reduce the risk of concussions. Thanks for watching.